I go exploratory mining for words and sounds, melt them down, then pound them into a powerful compound. I cool my creation with a breath of recollected narratives, exhaled onto some rough, unrefined stuff. I leave my last puff on my first draft, so the next day you'll find me meticulously perfecting my craft in sophisticated sentences or paradoxical paragraphs, inserting invisible phrases between the spaces so the inquiring mind can read between the lines. I am the wordsmith. Slam poetry is a poetry competition in which 10 to 12 poets um, come to our local venue here at Café du Soleil and um, they compete for the potential to win, uh, I guess it's what, $50, $25 or $10 depending on whether they place first, second or third. Uh, we have five random members of the audience who judge them on a scale of 0 0.1 to 10.0 and you need two poems to win out and it's the top total score between the two poems that uh, wins the evening. I, I'm, I write a lot of love poems, which is cheesy uh, and awesome and, and really good. So it means that, you know, there's a silver lining to every breakup because you're like, oh, think about all the good poetry I'm going to get out of this. I grew up believing that everything good in me was negated because I was fat as an adult. I've allowed self-hatred to snowball into relationships with men too damaged to love me, hoping they could understand the parts of me that were broken. But out of the nuclear winter of my past, my confidence is a flower growing radioactive and unexpected in a season that should have frozen me. This is the sound of 24 years of inertia cracking like ice in spring. So when you tell me I'm beautiful, you might still have to help me beat back my tears, but every moment I become more certain that you'd be good for me. I'm ready to believe that we could be incandescent and I've heard that spring is the best time to ask for second chances, for second dances in the moonlight beside a streetlight outside the brick house at 2 a.m. I got into slam poetry about a year and a half ago now, I guess. Uh, I was just sort of drawn to it by a couple of friends here, and uh, I resisted, and the first night I came, I just loved it, and I've been into it ever since. You're going to come in, and you're going to get an audience who's enthusiastic to your work, who's critical in a constructive manner, and who's really just enthusiastic to be exposed to as much as they can. So I would definitely give a thumbs up, kudos to the community. What I like about the Poetry Slam the most is that it is authentic. If you say something that offends somebody, you'll know right away. If you say something that really impresses somebody, you will know right away. It was like an instant movie in my mind. I'll tell you how it went. The first time we would monkey, I'd take her to my place. She'd stand before my bed with such amazing grace. I'd peel the laundry off that monument to feminine perfection. <laughs> and then lay her back so gently, positioned right by my direction. Then I'd run out of the room and down the hall, and I'd tear off my own clothes, and I'd come running back in stark, raving naked. Ah! And I'd leap on her from halfway across the room, not worried about my bed or if this stunt would break it, not concerned about the goddess she was big enough to take it. And then we... And we... And we... And even though it was our first time, we might even... And when all that stuff was finished and all the fun was done, we'd lay back exhausted, breathing both as one. What do I write about? Mm, everything that all poets write about, love, blackness, history, the future, the present. The beauty of uh, slam poetry and the competition therein is that anyone can perform. It's 8.02 on a Monday. 
and it doesn't get much worse than this because even though my sleeping lover wraps her arms around my waist with the delicacy of a butterfly kissing a raindrop, I'm thinking of this young east side working girl named Lily, who for all intents and purposes should be considered a forget-me-not. Rule number one for all of us east side worker bees is that you leave your work life on the bloodied street and no matter how much you may want to pollinate a particular person with pleasantries or kindness, to maintain your own sanity you play the role of the Dumble Drone, who only does what he's told and like a tourist learning a new language on tape every day you rewind, press, play and then repeat. But Lily wears her heart in the soiled hemline of this full length flower dress and I've talked to her at length about the writers she loves like Ernest Hemingway, Emily Dickinson and David Sedaris. And she says she only goes to work one or two nights a week and goes to the library the rest of the time and she spends less than her little habit, she says, then I spend on my daily doses of nicotine and wine, and I realize most days her addiction shields her from a history of sexual abuse and probably neglect. But all I can think of this morning is her strolling for tricks in the early hours and walking in the rain and getting wet. The slam poetry community here in Vancouver is like nothing that I've ever experienced before. No, they're, they're a very loyal and uh, Oh, supportive group. I guess supportive, that's the right word. Because I really, I don't fit into this because I'm an aberration. I'm old enough to be their father, and in some cases, their grandfather. So, uh, you know, they've been all good to me, and, and I, I really like them. I, I see them as my friends. Get together right now, trying into a community. You and me and the audience right now on the stage, off stage, in between the stage, on the stage of words, of thoughts, of mind. In the community, there is a unity drawing us together. It's theatrical harmony, bridging the gap between 